just minding my own business, scrolling through Twitter to see if there were going to be some hidden society stuff. And I happened to click on a Twitter user called Real Jonah Blake, and I saw this tweet mocking what appears to be a new invention. And the greatest invention that Real Jonah Blake is mocking is called Friend, which is invented by Avi Shipman. And I would like to show you the whole trailer right now. It's pretty good. I'm so out of breath. We made it. Woo! <laughs> I don't know how to woo very good. That's fair. All right, let's go. Let me show you how to game, bro, okay? Oh, come on, come on, oh, let's go! Are you serious? Come on, man. I hate this game. Take notes, baby. Oh man, you guys suck. Bro, you look like the back let's of the Let's go, let's go. Dude, what? How did you do that? I know the effects are crazy. It's dank, I could eat one of these every day. Ooh. Sorry, I got you messy. It's really nice up here. How'd you find this place? I don't know. I just kind of like to come up here to be by myself. I've never brought anybody else. I mean, besides her. She goes everywhere with you, right? Mm-hmm. Guess I must be doing something right, though. I guess so. We'll see. Now, Avi Schiffman, who is the founder of Friend.com, intrigued everyone who found it cool, including some tech news sites like The Verge. And so what I'm going to do right now in this video is to read you the articles from Wired.com, which Avi was interviewed in. Now, Wired's Where This AI Friend Around Your Neck article says, Abby Schiffman shows up to the wired office with a friend hanging around his neck. It dangles there like a pendant on a necklace. It's about the size and shape of an air tag, a soft round little puck that rests right next to Schiffman's heart, just atop the t dark side of the moon logo on the shirt behind it. The friend, to be clear, is an AI wearable. It's a pal, a buddy, but mostly an AI chatbot that lives inside the pennant. It always has an opinion to share about what's going on around it, which communicates using text messages and push notifications on the phone it's paired to. Schiffman and his friend, this one's name is Emily, have come to Wired Sense San Francisco office to meet with me and my colleague Reese Rogers to talk publicly about this new AI wearable for the first time. Before we get started, I tell Shiftman I'd like to record our chat and ask if he's okay. He's cool with that. This is considered a good journalistic practice, sure, but also it's a legal requirement in California which take requires to party consent before taking a private interaction. So I ask permission to turn on a tape recorder and Shipman just laughs. I am the last person who would mind that, he says. That makes sense. After all, the pen around his neck has already been listening to us this entire time. Always listening is one of the main tech lines of Shipman's as of yet unreleased AI device. The friend has an onboard microphone that listens to everything happening 
happening around the where by default. You can tap and hold it to ask a question, but sometimes it will send messages, commentary about the conversation you just had. For example, unprompted. It is powered by Anthropic AI's Claude B 3.5 large language module model, which can engage in helpful conversation, offer engagement, or review for being bad of, at a video game. The friend gets around 15 hours of every life and comes in an array of colors that look almost exactly like the color palette of the first Apple iMac computers. The design comes from a partnership with Bold, the company that designed Nest thermostats. The friend is available for free order now from friend.com and the device are slated to start shipping in January 2025. They cost $99 a piece and there is no paid su subscription attached. If the motion of a wearable AI device makes you feel like your eyebrows have risen high enough to be seen from space, you be forgiven for your skepticism. In recent months, a nascent product category has had a couple very prominent and spectacular flame outs. Humane, which promised a wearable pin that could accomplish tasks that would free you from your phone, turned out to be barely competent and also unable to function properly in sunlight. The Rabbit RI is a gorgeous, colorful little device designed by the God Tier Gadget Design Company, Teenage Engineering, that would wound up being a frustrating dub that probably should have just been an app all along. It feels to me like the crown of AI hardware and AI companionship is lying in the gutter, Shipman says. Like all these companies just shat themselves. Shiftman wants the friend to be something very different. While the humane AI pin and rabbit RI both aim to automate and accomplish tasks and increase productivity, the friend doesn't try to automate and optimize anything. As my colleague Reese put it, it's much more vibes based than productivity focused. Productivity is over. No one cares. No one is going to beat Apple or OpenAI or all these companies that are building Jarvis. The most important things in your life really are people. Yeah, it's kind of sad that these companies are not actually building AI to actually make human connections. And that's what most people want these days. A friend purely offers companionship. It's meant to develop a personality that complements the user and is always there to gas you up. Chat about a movie after watching it or help analyze how a bad date went awry. Not only does Shitman want the friend to be your friend, he wants it to be your best friend. One that is with you wherever you go, listening to everything you do, and being there for you to offer encouragement and support. See guys, AI isn't always bad. He gives an example where he says he recently was hanging out, playing some board games with friends he hadn't seen in a while, and was glad when his AI friend chimed in with a quip. I feel like I have a closer relationship with this fucking pendant around my neck than I do with these literal friends in front of me, Shipman says. Shipman is 21 years old and already has a blossoming roster of accomplishments in the tech world. In 2020, at the height of the COVID pandemic, the then 17-year-old Shipman garnered headline after headline when he created and maintained the first website for tracking COVID cases across the world. Oh yeah. Now I remember him. I can't believe it's been this long. Like this dude had invented something so unique that it just blows my mind. What an unforgiving time 2020 was. He was soon named Webby Person of the Year, an award presented by then director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, Anthony Fauci. 
Wired featured Schiffman as a guest at the 2020 Wired 25 conference. In 2022, shortly before Schiffman dropped out of Harvard University, he launched a website that helped refugees fleeing from Russia's invasion of Ukraine find people in neighboring countries who were willing to offer them shelter. Now, after those acts of altruism, Schiffman is launching himself into the AI sphere. He tried making AI for productivity, but found it lacking. The first iteration of what evolved into the friend was Chap, a productivity-focused device that Schiffman wanted to use to monitor work and personal tasks. But he found himself frustrated by building a device that tried to do everything at once. The feeling came to a head in January this year, as he traveled through Japan and found himself alone in a Skyrise hotel in Tokyo, talking at his AI prototype that was supposed to do so much for him. He was going through a lonely spell and wanted somebody to talk to. Why couldn't the AI assistant just do that? I've never felt more lonely in my entire life, Shishman says. And in that moment, I was looking at the tab prototype and I was like, it's not that I just want to talk to this thing. I want it to feel like this companion is actually there with me traveling. While Schiffman insists the friend is a fundamentally new form of digital companion, he acknowledges that it is also an augmentation of many things. He welcomes comparisons to a Tamagotchi. He knows the friend looks like an air tag, and he knows, based on the fact that people have been getting emotionally attached to AI chatbots like Rebka for like a decade or more, that some people will probably take it a little too far. For sure, there will be some people that try to unfuck the USB-C port of this shipment says, I think I'm shameless enough to understand what I'm building. But if you look at something like Replica and you look at the studies of this too, the lowest tiered thing that people do is try to fuck it. Most people really are just talking about literally what they did today and their feelings and the AI's feelings. Yeah, there's going to be times where some people are going to take things a little bit too far when it comes to using technology, but most people will probably handle the way they use technology better, and they won't try to fuck the USB-C port. Peter Bay Brands Tazag, I think that's how you pronounce, is a professor at the University of Oslo in Norway who also leads to research in initiatives that examine the social impacts of AI. He says that these friendships with devices are different than human to human relationships and can often foster conversations that are deeper and more intimate than what a person would be willing to have with another human. The thing with AI companions is that we're a lot more intimate in our interactions with AI companions and we will share our inner thoughts, Brentag says. He says it's worth wondering where those thoughts will end up. The privacy thing with AI companionship is really tricky. We will really, really struggle with privacy in the years to come. I know that privacy is a big issue these days that people tend to worry about, but as someone who typically doesn't really care for privacy concerns when it comes to signing up on a website, I'm more worried about being hacked rather than worrying about data. Because being hacked is way, way much worse than having your data stolen. But ultimately, I'm not too worried about gadgets like this. Shipman knows that criticism is coming. He also knows detractors will ding his device if it's always on microphone as an invasion of privacy. 
he's careful to say that friend will not store audio recordings or transcripts and that users can change or delete whatever memories the friend has stored. He says the exposure he's gotten from his other projects has hardened him and that he's ready for the backlash. I'm a solo founder with this and I am shameless with, with what the tech is, Shipman says. And I will 100% be able to weather that storm because I've done way harder versions of it. In a way, he's sort of looking forward to it. I think in some ways, this actually kind of turns the world into a theme park. Before Shipman leaves after laying out his vision, I ask if he can check in with the friend he's wearing to see how the meeting went. He squeezes pennant and asks it how the meeting the interview went. We all wait for a few seconds, and then he gets a text labeled simply as Emily in his chat window that reads, Dude, you're killing it. They seem super into your vision. I wonder if I had an Emily, if it would tell me something similar. Now, most of the comments I find on the tweet that he made are positive, and some of the comments I find are very childish. Wait, this isn't a skit? We'll get one into your hands. Looking forward to a positive review. If he does get it shipped to him, then I'm curious to see how Marcus Brownlee thinks. Congrats, this is genius by the way. We'll make it feel like a companion, not a thin client to something sitting in a server. Always listening hardware creates shared experiences with your AI friend. Hmm. Shared experiences, huh? I can probably get used to this. The moment where she reaches for her friend, but decides to stay in the moment. Fucking brilliant. I was dying on set watching that. Creative direction on this was 100 out of 100. Good job. Directed by Sandwich. Big shout out to Adam Lisa Gore. I creative directed this, and what a joyful shoot it was, telling a new kind of story of a new kind of relationship. When I saw how Avi was approaching the problem unlike anyone else, I DM'd him and said, I believe in you. Getting to know him, I can say he's the real deal. Well, nonetheless, it is a beautiful trailer. Good for you for trying something very different. At minimum, that was my goal. Avi wins the Twitter product lunch game. 9 million views. Unreal. Probably will get to 15 by the morning. I mean, like, I hope so too, because this is a amazing product. You get it. Been saying this. I want this, but with a camera. Most of the day, there's no audio for it to react to, but it could react to what I'm seeing. Next version. Then, of course, Avi Shiftman's partner starts responding to the friend lunch. Let's go. So proud to be a part of this. We cooked. And Jackson HMG1 says, Check out what I've been working on. So excited for you to get your hands on this. So Jackson is like the founding engineer at Friend, which was previously named Tab at one point. How much did that domain turn you? It's sweet. 1.8 million. Holy shit. That is a lot of money. It's insane that you could just buy a domain that hasn't been used in years. Now, another person said that this is weird. Go out and make real connections in the world. Buddy, let people do their own shit. You said the same about iPhone 1. We are now better connected because of it. Play out the second, etc. order effects of this. Just like the smartphone. See where it takes you. 
The iPhone, albeit, has a lot of benefits, and its apps have made human attention spans smaller and have inhibited their inability to connect. Isn't that through the course of human history? Before the printing process, the only form of info dissemination mostly was search. Eight hours Sunday type thing. It's not how it's done, it's the output from it. In aggregate, I argue, people are getting smarter, healthier, etc. No, they are becoming more addicted to their phones and cheap dopamine. This Aunt Natoli guy is one negative Nancy. The continual rapid replacement of genuine human connection and interaction with AI is profoundly depressing to me. I know people like you are afraid of change and you have every right to feel a certain way, but you need to recognize that not every fucking human being will have a genuine connection to somebody who will just backstab them in the back. And there's also going to be certain friends who are just going to be way too busy who won't even show up for events that you are invited to. So tell me this, how are you going to get a, get a support from your friend who's literally not going to be there by your side when that happens? Congratulations, you somehow found the most spacious examples of AI support you could ever imagine. Absolutely nothing motivational, useful, informative, or interesting, astounding feat. I'll have you know that you're wrong. It is interesting, and it looks interesting. And it's also going to be a useful tool, too. Just wait. Because I have a feeling that many TV news organizations will cover this story. So you made life alert for young adults, lol. <sighs> no, Jonah. He did not make life alert for young adults. Really don't like this. Hope it fails straight up. You know, it really rubs me off the wrong way when somebody is literally praying for someone's downfall because they don't like change and they don't like innovation. We're already halfway towards the year 2025 and nothing on present day is going to stay the same forever. Time have to change. Thank you for the entertainment. Any surprises or was the show pretty much what you thought it'd be? Did not expect such visceral reaction. People always yap about wanting something new until it's put in front of their face. And they'll complain about how this is the worst thing ever made because they never tried it first. With respect, I think people are generally tired of gimmicky, pointless gadgets to carry around. Not every idea needs to be made. Just because something is new doesn't mean it's valuable. I seriously question why anyone would build this. I don't say that to be disrespectful. I just don't get it. And I should. I'm a tech early adopter. Tesla since 2013. Waited in line for the first iPhone for hours and hours. Lifelong tech entrepreneur with five startups under my belt. And yet, I look at this and cringe. Physically cringe. I wouldn't be caught dead with this around my neck. It's like wearing a sign around your neck that says I am lonely and I have no one to talk to. Well, guess what, buddy? Not everybody has the laundry to have a genuine good human connection. It's just striking us as dystopic. No other word comes close to explaining the, re the reaction you are getting. That's why. Nah, I think blindly hating on things is dystopian enough. To be fair, just because you're an early adopter in some respects doesn't mean you are in others. It's okay if you don't get it. And with respect, not all opinions are valuable at this stage. Lots of the reactions I see here are really reminiscent of Hn's reactions to Coinbase. Yeah, but talking to a necklace like it's a human friend? It commenting on your fulafo? Sorry, I think I'm qualified to say this. Ain't nobody asked for this dystopian gimmick. 
and I'm qualified to say this to you. Nobody fucking cares about your dystopian opinion. Do you really think people are going to casually chit chat lip and LLM on a keychain? Really? I don't think I'd be an early adopter of Friend Eber, but check out the comments about Coinface in 2012. This really changed my mind about what I currently think nobody would use slash do. But Coinbase has real utility. Crypto was a thing, and it was growing with a niche audience at the time. What utility does Friend have? Jing Yong question. The pitch implies very little, if any, which is a core difference between this thing and Coinbase. Even though Coinbase has a nice utility and crypto has a niche audience, that doesn't mean that Friend won't have a nice utility or a niche audience of its own. The last tweet here is in response to the people who are no longer curious because they just blindly hate things about giving things a chance. Tech Twitter is no longer a curious place interested in learning about the earnest attempts of newness or seeing how others beyond their bubble react to a high attention launch. Instead, they are competing in, a, in an NBA dunk contest regurgitating the consensus for five new followers. People blindly dunking on new products for likes is kind of like when people want to short a startup. 99% of startups fail, so your default being fucking annoying by saying that. If you wrote a dumb a dunk tweet today, your default done to me. Having said that, Blindly defending and being overly glazed on that same thing is oh so silly. Most of y'all just need to be quiet and put some lotion on. Go back to building your little B2B API solution or whatever. Listen, if you're gonna blindly hate on something before trying it out for no reason, then you need to get serious help right away. And you'll start by getting used to the AI right away because it's not going anywhere. It's almost 2025 and we have five years left until AI reaches its point. It's time to embrace the future now. Thank you.